So this is the new Samsung Galaxy A25 5G. Samsung's latest mid-range series phone for 2024. Samsung will also be launching the more expensive Galaxy A35 and A55 pretty soon, and if you remember last year's A24, A34, and A54, all of them were very successful models from Samsung, especially in the retail offline market. But if you look at all of Samsung's A-Series lineup, their pricing has always been quite higher than the competition, and I feel like the new Galaxy A25 5G is also slightly overpriced for what it actually offers. However, with the A-Series phones, we usually get some form of price cut every now and then, so it's always wiser to wait for that. The Galaxy A25 right now starts at $199 for the 128GB variant. But during those sale campaigns, it should go down to as low as 160 or 170 But even at that price, I believe this thing is only an average offering in my books. Plus, you don't get a charger inside the box here, so you will need to buy it separately. And it will cost you around $12 for the original 25-watt Samsung brick, making it even less value for money. Honestly, I think Samsung should consider offering a charger at least in their budget and mid-range lineup. But anyway, let me start the review with the things that I actually like about the Galaxy A25. First is the design. It's very similar to what you get from other A-Series phones from the past, and its design is quite minimal from the back and gives the classic Samsung vibe. It is slightly different from its predecessor in the sense that you get a unique pattern on the back, while the right side of the frame has this wedged layout for better grip. As for colors, I got myself this good-looking yellow color option, but you can also choose between blue and black colors, and despite the back and the frames being made up of plastic, it is indeed a well-built phone. It does not feel cheap on the hands and has a nice overall heft. However, you don't get an official IPP67 rating here, that thing is only reserved for higher end series phones. Likewise, you also don't get an in-display fingerprint sensor here, and rather the volume button doubles up as the fingerprint sensor, which by the way is fast and accurate. Samsung has also included a headphone jack here, an FM radio which is kind of rare in the smartphone industry these days. Overall, the Galaxy A25 5G is a good-looking phone from the back, but sadly the front design is not very inspiring as you will notice a big chin below. The screen and an ugly notch up front. The core display of this phone is quite nice though you get a 6.5 in Full HD plus Super AMOLED panel with Wi-1 L1 certification for Full HD streaming. 120Hz refresh rate and up to 1000 nits with automatic brightness enabled so perfectly usable outdoors. The Vivid Mode also produces some nice punchy colors, perfect for content consumption, and pair that with a nice set of stereo speakers. The Galaxy A25 is a very good phone to binge watch Netflix and other ODT platforms. I also found the battery life on this thing to be very good. It provided me with a consistent one-day backup. I am someone who takes a lot of photos, and I'm always using mobile data, and with the Galaxy A25, I usually had to charge it just before going to bed. So yes, solid battery backup over here. Charging is a bit slower as expected from a Samsung phone, as it takes over 1.5 hours to get fully juiced up. Another thing that I like about the Galaxy A25 5G is that you are getting 4 years of OS updates and 5 years of security patches here. Software experience is also pretty solid. The One UI here is very easy to use, there is very little bloatware, no ads and I have not faced any weird bugs either, and if you are not a heavy user, the performance should be adequate, the 120Hz refresh rate is fairly stable. And multitasking between two to three light apps is smooth as well, that being said if you have used a mid-range phone or a premium mid-range phone from 2022 or beyond, you will know for sure that the performance here is not great. It's fine, but for the asking price of above $199.
Samsung should definitely be doing better. The Galaxy A25 is using Xeno's 1280 chipset, which is already a two-year-old chipset. And even two years ago, this chipset was not all that powerful and stable hence. If you're a power user, you will notice a hint of sluggishness and choppiness in the UI every now and then, and as expected, gaming is also suppy here. Most AAA titles run at just 30 FPS. I think Samsung should have opted for maybe last year's Xeno's 1380. That chipset was more stable and faster or they could have given the Dimensity 1080 or Snapdragon 770. There is Snapdragon 7's Gen 2 or the Dimensity 7200. Anything would have been better here. Finally, the cameras. And this is one aspect where Samsung usually shines, but I found the Galaxy A25 cameras to be just average. It is better than something like the POX6 Pro in terms of colors. But I didn't find the Galaxy A25 cameras to be all that reliable during daytime. It does capture good vibrant looking images and it has balanced dynamic range as well, but I found most photos to be lacking in details and the high light management is a hit or a miss. I also found it strange to see that 50 megapixel camera struggles in indoor lighting, but if you're taking photos of landscape or buildings in low light, you can turn on night mode and get fairly better result. The Galaxy A25 5G can also take good look portrait shots as well as selfies, but once again it can be a hit or a miss depending upon the lighting situation. Plus this 8 megapixel ultra wide angle camera is barely usable as it's bad at everything from dynamic range details and sharpness videography is also strictly average. You can click up to 4K 30fps videos from the back and 1080p 30fps from the front but you do not get any form of stabilization so the Galaxy A25 5G is a pretty average offering from Samsung this year especially considering the cutthroat competition in the mid-range segment for a similar price. I think you will get better value with last year's Galaxy A34 or Motorola's H40 that brings better cameras, IP rating, and stable performance. So everybody that was all for this video. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And while you're there, a subscription to the channel would be great. To Lai Mali, and I will see you in my next video. Till then, take care and bye.